2013 marks the 40th anniversary of the HMO Act of 1973. And surprisingly, we've been looking at population health in the same way for the last 40 years. We still think of primary care physicians as gatekeepers, preventing patients from getting to expensive specialists. And we still believe that the key to saving money is to prevent the occurrence of costly illness. Now for 40 years, we've taken the same approach, sure that we were right. Turns out, we were wrong. An overwhelming majority of healthcare spending comes from a very small subset of any population, with more than one-fourth of total spending coming from only 1% of the population, and over half of the costs arise from only 5% of the people. Over half of any population, we call them the healthy majority, spends little or nothing in any given year. When we look at healthcare spending in other countries, we see an identical pattern. The costliest 10% of the American population accounts for 65% of total spending, exactly the same as Belgium. In Denmark and Canada, the costliest 10% of their populations account for 73 and 79% of spending respectively, suggesting that concentrated spending has biologic, not economic origins. Now any large population can be divided into four biological cohorts, each demanding distinctly different management approaches, and none of which were part of old-school managed care theory. The first population cohort, and by far the largest, is the healthy majority. In any year, half of all Americans average only $240 in health care spending. So reducing total spending for this cohort by 10% would generate savings of $2 per person per month. The administrative expenses for a typical ACO, excluding claims processing and marketing, average $17.60 per person per month. So it's hard to justify traditional gatekeeper utilization review infrastructure costs for over half of the population. Insurance deductibles are a far more efficient tool for the healthy majority. Over 40% of all commercially insured healthcare spending arises from largely unpredictable, unavoidable single events, like accidental injuries, appendectomies, and childbirth. The notion that we can avoid single event spending by assigning healthy people to medical homes and promoting wellness is in large measure wishful thinking. Unpredictable, unavoidable single events just happen. And in most cases, there is nothing that a primary care medical home can do to prevent them. The second biological cohort, accounting for about one-third of the pre-Medicare population and the poster child for managed care enthusiasts for 40 years, has early-onset chronic conditions, such as diabetes or hypertension. Medical homes make sense for the early-onset chronic cohort but we need fewer than one-half as many as 1973 thinking suggested and a 180-degree change in the way we look at the world. Now, the older way of thinking puts the primary care physician, or PCP, in the role of gatekeeper, charged with keeping patients away from costly specialists. New thinking sees the PCP as the episode quarterback, with an eye toward early specialist intervention when chronic diseases progress. Old thinking created adversarial relationships between PCPs and specialists. A dollar not spent on specialists was a dollar PCPs put into their own pocket. New thinking creates partnerships between PCPs and specialists. Medical homes are anchored to tertiary medical centers with easy access to specialists who are seen as the cavalry rather than barbarians at the gate. The PCP's mindset changes from, you don't need to see a specialist unless, to, you need a specialist if. Now the third population cohort is the subset of patients with full onset chronic disease. The orphan of traditional managed care, this group has been virtually unmanaged through 40 years of population health. These patients spend over eight times as much as the early onset cohort, averaging over $34,500 per person per year with 20 to 30 percent savings opportunities if avoidable variation in treatment is reduced. This cohort needs regionalized specialty medical homes 
anchor to tertiary medical resources, where multidisciplinary care teams, including pharmacists, behavioral health, palliative care, and social support services are readily available. And the last biological cohort, and the most expensive, is comprised of patients involved in complex episodes of care, including cancer and strokes. Managed care plans dealt with this cohort by establishing what were called centers of excellence. But unfortunately, most of the attention and selection criteria were focused on price, and the centers were not uniformly excellent. A close look at commercial claims data shows a 50% variation, $30,000 to $50,000 per patient, in the cost of newly diagnosed lung cancer episodes between more efficient and less efficient settings, driven by wide variation in the use of chemotherapy, radiation, and major imaging, as well as an uneven adherence to evidence-based standards and poor uptake of palliative care, despite the fact that it reduces stress, controls symptoms, and even extends life expectancy. Delivering more efficient episodes of complex care requires centralized, facility-based centers anchored to research that emphasize subspecialty care and include pharmacists, psychosocial, and palliative care resources. Bottom line, we must become experts at end-of-life care. You know, somewhere along the way, inside-the-box thinking got a bad rap. Population health advocates often embrace prevention while de-emphasizing the importance of treating the sick in favor of avoiding sickness. But the economic reality is that it's all about treating the sickest more efficiently. A 20% reduction in the cost of full onset chronic illness and complex episodes of care, definitely an attainable goal based on hard data, would save the U.S. health system $300 billion per year. So, what went wrong over the last 40 years of population health? And what should we do differently this time around? Well, we created an enormously expensive Rube Goldberg device to prevent largely unpreventable single events among the healthy majority. So what we need now are easily accessible, low-cost solutions for simple problems, like walk-in clinics. We missed the mark by establishing PCPs as gatekeepers. For patients with early-onset chronic conditions, we need primary medical homes linked to specialists who are partners and not adversaries. Distracted by the wishful thinking and obsessed with HEDIS measures, we all but ignored the orphan cohort, patients with full-onset chronic disease. They need multidisciplinary medical neighborhoods, anchored to tertiary medical centers and led by specialists. We coined the term centers of excellence for complex episodes, but our focus was on price, not evidence-based standards. We need comprehensive centers anchored to research, and they must actually be excellent, especially in end-of-life care. You know, Albert Einstein once observed, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that we used when we created them. For 40 years, we have returned time and again to the same approach to population health, and it hasn't worked. It's time for new ideas.